בעזרת השם, נעשה ונצליח. I'd like to thank our gracious host, Michael Sitron, for letting us use his home to do this special online class. I'd like to thank the people that are in attendance here tonight. May this class be to the Ilui Nishmat of Herbert Dornbush and may it also be to the Refua Shelema of Refua Nefesh Refua Guf of Shoshana Bat Esther Shoshana Bat Esther Be'ezat Hashem Be'ezat Hashem that we have Besor Tovot real soon I'd also like to thank uh, our sponsors Joseph Dornbush and Stacy Bouton Thank you so much for uh, sponsoring the Lighthouse Project for the year. And now that we're uh, doing some online classes also, I would like to bless you, your children, your family. But let us you guys have a blessing of this upcoming year. Amen. And have a great holiday for Sukkot. Amen. Let's get started. Spiritual preparation for Sukkot. The 40-day journey is over the journey for those that entered that 40 club or club 40 that started in Rosh Chodesh Elul and ended in uh, Yom Kippur just ended a couple of days ago however there are some people that are in the club 51 some people that are now still part of the spiritual journey that started in Rosh Chodesh Elul and goes past Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and goes into Sukkot, Simchat Torah, and Hoshana Rabbah. The secret is in the word Hoshana, Na. The word Na is spelled out Nun Aleph. And the numerical value of Nun Aleph is Nun is 50. Aleph is 151. This whole real journey, beginning to end, uh, ends after 51 days. And that's still on. We're now in the middle of it, in the, towards the end of it. We have the next holiday that's coming up is Sukkot. That's tomorrow. And Sukkot is a seven-day holiday. That within it, we also have Shemini Atzeret, Hoshana Rabbah, Simchat Torah. So tonight, it's very hard to put all everything that encompasses the holiday of Sukkot in one hour. But we're going to zone in a couple of things that are very, very interesting about this holiday. And towards the end of the lesson, we'll do some segulot uh, that are, that this would be an auspicious time to do during this holiday. Let's get some background on Sukkot. Sukkot, first and foremost, is one of the Shalosh Regalim. Sefer Devarim says over there the Pasuk, Shlosha Pamim Bashana Yerae Kol Zechurecha et Peneshem Elokecha. Bamakom Ashim Ha Bechaga Matzot, Chaga Shavot. Of Sukkot, which basically means that all the Jews would make a pilgrimage three times a year to Jerusalem. Just imagine that. Imagine that event. All the Jews make their way to Yerushalayim three times a year. Sukkot is one of them. Back in the day, Sukkot was the holiday. It was the top of, of the top. Many times it's mentioned in the Torah, just not like any other holiday by its name. It's mentioned as Hachag, the holiday. Just like, you know, sometimes there's some uh, artists that they just have one name. Chag Sukkot has one name, the Chag, the holiday. That's how important it is. That's how big it was. It still is. Chaga Sukkot has other names, also known as Chaga Asif, which is the holiday of ingathering when people would uh, uh, gather their harvest. And it's also very famous and very well known for, for being one of the bloodiest uh, holidays in Bet HaMikdash. It had the most amount of animal sacrifices than any other holiday. As a matter of fact, it would be 70 bulls 
98 sheep and 14 deers would be offered in a span of seven days. However, the Haldir of Sukkot is most famously known for the Sukkah and the seven day period we spend in it. And of course, the Arba Minim, which is the four species, which are Etrog, Arava, Hadassah, and Ulav. Etrog is the citron, or from the, uh, the citron fruit. Arava is the willow tree branches. Hadassah is the myrtle tree branch. And the Lulav is a ripe green closed frond from the date palm tree. Typically, when you think of Sukkot, that's what you think of. You think of the Sukkah and the Arba Minim. Interestingly enough, we're actually commanded to be happy on this holiday. In the Kiddush and in Birkat Amazon, we say, Zman Simchatenu. It's the time of our joy, it's the time of our happiness. And uh, something that you would hear very commonly during this holiday, many, many times, you'd hear many Jews singing, It says, you have to be happy in this holiday. And you have to be happy as a group and as an individual. Before we get into the important halachot and the segulot of the Chag, let's talk a little bit about happiness. It's the order of the day. Sukkot, you have to be happy. What is this happiness that we're trying to achieve on Sukkot? Can we describe it? I mean, people get happy in different ways. What is the order of the day? I mean, the Torah says you need to be happy on this day. How do you achieve it? Well, there's a few things that we know that are a must. One is you got to have the simchav, the sevudah. How do Jews get happy? We eat. What do we eat? The custom is to eat a meal. A meal constitutes of bread, must have bread. And meat and wine. This is the holiday of basar, the yain. And they say that meat and wine makes a person happy. This is the time that you see a lot of people barbecuing. A lot of people... Uh, bringing out their uh, best meat dishes. It's part of the holiday. Another way to get happy is we study Torah. Torah brings a lot of simcha. We know that when somebody passes away, for seven days, the, person is for, the, the people that are mourning are forbidden to learn Torah. Why? Because if they learn Torah, they'll get happy. And when they're in mourning, the order of the day is not to be happy. However, on Yom Tov or on the Chag, the rabbis tell us you have to learn. Half the day of the Yom Tov, you should be spending it in shuls, praying and studying. And the other half of the day with the family. The rabbis also tell us to buy jewelry for the wives. Apparently that's what makes the, wife, uh, the, the woman happy. For, 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 uh, for uh, Sukkot or for Yom Tov jewelry for the woman it's a halakha however for Sukkot which is also called Chag Asif, the holiday of gathering it's a unique happiness it's a little bit different the happiness comes from you as a Jew sitting in the sukkah and reflecting and thinking what mitzvot did I gather this year what mitzvot did I gather in the previous year and you sit there you start to say you know what this year I practically didn't miss that one prayer in Minyan this year I think I put on tefillin every day this year, I went from not learning at all to learning in the morning and sometimes at night. This year, 
my house went completely kosher. This year, the TV's off in my house. And you just go. And you go down the line of all the things, of the mitzvot, of the chaga asif, all the mitzvot you gathered for the previous year. And then you concentrate on everything that you did during the, tes- the teshuvah season of Chodesh Elul, Aset Emet Shuvah, Rosh Hashanah, Kippur. And you reflect on all the mitzvot you picked up along the way in that time period. And sitting there in the sukkah, thinking about all the mitzvot you gathered, that's what gives you happiness. That's what gives you happiness. Knowing that you are walking in the ways of Hashem in His Torah, in His Torah, it gives a tremendous amount of happiness that doesn't dissipate. That's the Chag Asif. That's real joy. The rabbis tell us that the entire year's happiness can be gained in Sukkot. It's a holiday of joy. The, the whole year that's coming up, all the happiness that you're going to get on this year is connected to the seven-day period, eight-day period. Sukkot has, has the record of being the happiest day of the year in the history of the Jewish nation or in Jewish life. During this time period, you used to have, in the time of Bet HaMikdash, Simchat Bet HaShoeva. And Chazal tell us, Mi shelo ra'a Simchat Bet HaShoeva, lo ra'a Simcha Be'yamam. Someone who didn't witness this jubilee, this party, this, 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 uh, the, the festivities of Simchat Bet HaShoeva, never saw happiness in his life. We have to imagine it. Bet HaMikdash the streets are fully lit people are dancing in the street Nisuach Bet HaMikdash is when they would take the buckets of water and be washing the uh, the, the walls of Bet HaMikdash the stories of the rabbis juggling uh, eight or nine what would you call it, torches of uh, lit torches a rabbi dancing on his fingers I mean you can't even the, they can say you, you've never experienced it. Tremendous amount of joy. And this was connected to the drawing of water from the well, which is called Nisuach Bet HaMikdash. There's also a famous song. Another famous song. What are they talking about? So we took water from the well. What is the happiness about drawing water from a well? The rabbis tell us the reason why this day was so unique, or this time period was so unique, this happiness that was available to the Jews, is because they weren't just physically drawing water. They were also drawing Ruach, Ruach HaKodesh at the same time. It was a yearly event that while they were drawing water for Nisuach Bet HaMikdash, they were actually be, be, uh, drawing for themselves Ruach HaKodesh, spiritual sustenance at the same time. So there was a tremendous amount of happiness, not just for the event, but the spirituality that was going on. And not only that, this was a way to draw Kedushah for the entire upcoming year. And that spiritual energy that I'm talking about right now, this whole... Nisuach Bet Hamikdash, Shafte Ma'im Besasson. This, all the, this joy is that, that, that there's never been a happiness like this. That uh, you've never seen a happiness like the happiness of the time of Nisuach Bet Hamikdash. That energy, that spiritual energy, is available to us today. Tomorrow it starts. We said many times in the classes, time is not a timeline. It's a spiral. You have to imagine. Uh, the, the world is just one year, 365 days, that's constantly looping around. And each time that a certain date comes around, 
it has a certain spiritual energy that we try to get plugged into. The best example of that is Yom Kippur. We just passed it. Yom Kippur is the day that Hashem forgave the Jewish people for the sin of the Egel. And Moshe Rabbeinu came down and says, Hashem forgave you, and he brought down the second set of Luchot. So every time Yud of Tishrei comes around, what do we do? We know that Hashem is in a forgiving mood on that day. We plug in Yom Kippur. We show up every year on Yom Kippur for forgiveness. Similarly, when it comes to Sukkot, we know that Simchat Bet Shoeva, Chag Asif, this is a happy time. This is where the Jewish people gain, that, gain their happiness for the year, where they gain their uh, uh, the Ruach HaKodesh for the year. Plug us in, get plugged in. For the next seven days, get happy. Because that's, the, that's what's sort of available. In two weeks from now, you try to plug in and get this happiness for the year, it's not there. There's nothing to plug into, there's no socket. Right now, there is. You know, since we're singing a lot of songs for the holiday, another one that you'll constantly hear is Vesa Machta Becha Gecha Vehaita Achsameach. This is when this is when you start to hear these songs. Why? It says Vesamachta Bechagecha, and you should be shall be happy in your holiday. Vehaita Achsamech, and you should be happy as such, or like this. So again, it's like a, we're commanded, or the the order of the day is to be happy. But I once uh, heard a beautiful explanation, a beautiful uh, interpretation of this uh, song or this pasuk. It says, "V'samachta bechagecha v'ita ach sameach." What's ach? Ach is when something hurts you. What happens? You know, like right now, we're in the middle of the of the holiday season. We just had Rosh Hashanah, Kippur. We're getting into Sukkot. You know, it's a lot of food, a lot of shopping, a lot of accessories: lulav, sukkah, etrog barbecue meat it can hurt a person's pocket right a person can complain about it oh the holidays oh we spent so much what do we have to spend so much is that no 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 when it's ah when it's hurting you in your pocket be sameach, be happy don't let it get to you sometimes also people complain oh man i haven't been at work of my this week only two days, next week one day, oh, the holidays, we just had a hurricane, this and that. We know, you know, you know, everybody's going through the same thing. The point is, don't complain. When it's ach, when it hurts you, when you get the ach, be happy. Also in life, you know to be happy. When things hurt in any way, even if it's emotional, financial, physical, happiness is the key. Happiness is the key because Hashem hotovu metiv, right? We constantly say that concept. God is good and what He does is good. That's it. Hakol tov. Even if you don't have those lenses on that lets you see that everything is good right now. You don't have that vision. But Hashem hotovu metiv. Learn to be happy regardless of the situation. It's a challenge. It's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. Sukkot can help us get there. Get plugged in for this seven days, you might be able to be happy for the entire year. Anyone who puts in the work will be able to uh, reap the fruits for the rest of the year. Be happy. Talk a little bit about the sukkah. Sukkah, you know, in the word sukkah, you can learn the shape of a kosher sukkah. This is elementary. Most people know this. The samech has four, four walls. A kosher sukkah can have four walls. The chaf has three walls. A kosher sukkah can have three walls. The hay has two walls and a little, almost like a door that also can be the shape of a kosher sukkah. It's in the word sukkah. The walls can be made of anything. The schach must grow from the ground. In other words, you can't use plastic, you can't use metal. It has to be a specific height, 
and it can't be uh, a specific light and length. And we are actually obligated to eat, sleep, and learn in it. And when I say sleep, that's when you're doing bread and mezonot. By the way, just like a quick tip. If you're eating bread, if you're eating mezonot, has to be in a sukkah. Everything else, you could have a barbecue and salad and for a hundred people outside. You don't have to use a sukkah. But if it's bread and mezonot, it's a must. Keep that in mind, it's a good tip. By the way, women are not obligated to sit in a sukkah. It falls under mitzvah she'azman ge'ama, nashim petuot. It's one of those mitzvot that are connected to time. So the women are not obligated, just like the shofar, so is the sukkah. So sometimes, you know, if you have a small little sukkah, it doesn't fit everyone. Who gets to sit down in the sukkah? The men. It's their mitzvah. They could always do it later on if they have to, but the, true, the real mitzvah is for the men. Question is though, what is the reason for the sukkah in Sukkot? What is the reason that we build a temporary dwelling right outside our house, right in our backyard, right in our driveway in Sukkot? Many reasons have been given. The classic one that you'll read in the Sidur, the time to remind you of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Build a sukkah, sit in it, to remind you of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Hashem never wants us to forget Yetziat Mitzrayim. It's like this mega event we constantly have to remember. Also to remind us of Ananeh HaKavod, which protected us in the desert in the merit of Aharon Kohen. We know that we got the man, because of Moshe. We got the Be'er Mai because of Miriam. And Anani Akavod, we got to, uh, from the merit of uh, Aharon Kohen. What were these Anani Akavod? What were these clouds? Well, basically, the Jews in the middle of the desert had these protective clouds that would have climate control, that would have like a, a personal AC traveling with them in the middle of the scorching desert. It would get rid of snakes and scorpions along the way. It would level out the terrain from highs and lows, from valleys to mountains. It was like a protective, uh, like a protective uh, covering while they were in the desert. And I always thought that the perfect time for Sukkot would be Pesach. If you really think about it, wouldn't like the ultimate experience be to sit in the sukkah, eat a matzah in the time of Yetziat Mitzrayim? That's the ultimate experience. Like imagine Pesach. You Dalet Ben Nisan. Yeah, they just came out of of Mitzrayim. You sit in the sukkah. Yeah, they lived like this. They, you know, this was their temporary dwelling while they were traveling in the desert. And this is what they ate would be the matzah. It looks like the perfect thing would be to celebrate Sukkot in Pesach. It would be like the real McCoy feeling of Yetziat Mitzrayim. Like all the experiences tied into one. However, the deeper meaning to Sukkot, anti not on his, in his son is one word emuna. Why emuna? Because we just finished a full year of work, right? Let's take it back in the days. Hagasif is a farmer, he's working in agriculture, he's planting, he's watering, he's working the land. He's monitoring the growth. He's following the laws of Maaser, Orla, Shechicha. He harvests all the food. He sold it. He made a profit. In addition, he just finished the, the Teshuvah season, like we said. He just did Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Kippur. And now Hashem says, take all your physicality, all your mundane, 
all the physical things of the everyday life and take your highly elevated state of the high holidays because you know during the high holidays we feel like we start to get more of a connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and use all those experiences to build Emunah for the upcoming year HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants us to remember our ancestors our ancestors followed the Kadosh Baruch Hu from Egypt to Metropolis, even though they were slaves. But slaves still had access to water and food and, 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 and basic needs. They lived in a city. But Hashem wants us to remember in, in, in uh, Sukkot how our ancestors followed Hashem to a barren desert. No food, no water, nothing, nothing, nothing there. They had a few crackers in their backpack and that was it. That was pure amuna that Hashem will provide in the desert. Pure amuna that Hashem will pro provide in a barren land. David Melech in Tehilim quotes it. Uh, how some certain Jews lost their emunah and they said Hayuchal el shulchan bamidmar. Will Hashem be able to set a, a full table of delicacies in the desert? Sukkot is a time to tap into that to tap into that emunah, to that blind faith that a Jew will say take me out of slavery Take me out of my problems and where? Straight to a desert. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. And you know what? It's going to be okay. Hashem will give me everything that I need. Go. Hashem wants us to remember the, the faith of that Jew in Sukkot. Why? Because we have a whole year in front of us. Sukkot is the time to tap into that emunah. Before Hoshana Rabbah shoots us out to the next major holiday, which is in Pesach. You have to sit in the sukkah for the next seven days and trust and believe that whatever Hashem did for Am Yisrael Bamidbar, He can do for you in your private life at any given time. They say Yeshua Hashem Ka'erifayim. Hashem can save you in a split second. You have to, I imagine it like this. You look at your house, you look at your car in the driveway, you look at your backyard, you know, like you're, you're standing right outside of your own life. It's like a third person experience. And you have to be thankful for what you have. Hashem, thank you very much. You know, it always starts with gratitude. And the, for the things that you feel are lacking in your life, you build them enough for it. The Hashem will make it happen for you. Just like He made it happen for the Jews in the desert, when there was nothing there, and they had everything, man, water, uh, what didn't they have? Moshe Rabbeinu, Torah, they never had to change their clothes, their clothes grew, grew with them. Their clothes never got dirty, dry cleaning while you're walking. They had the, the food of angels. <coughs> the water, the food tasted like anything. The water tasted like anything. They never had to go to the bathroom unless they ate something other than the man. What a life. Purely spiritual life. Everything was custom made for them. You have to believe that Hashem can do the same for you in your own life. And all that can get activated through Torah, Mitzvot, and Masim Tovim. It's the beginning of the year. You just got forgiven for everything. As a Jew, you have to believe that the whole process that you just went through, Elul, Rosh Hashanah, Kippur, you put in the time, for what? Hashem, please forgive me. That's it. You got to walk that say, you know, clean slate. I'm a brand new baby. I'm two days old, three days old. I have no sins. If I do Torah, if I do mitzvot, if I do Masim Tovim, life is going to be amazing. That's the mentality. 
That's the emuna. That's Sukkot. One more thing about Sukkot. You know, we just went through a 10 days of Ainui. Aseret Emet Shuva. You know, those are the days, heavy days of introspect. Some people fast on those days. You know, these are days that Jews usually torture themselves in through Teshuvah. Like, you know, they're really giving it a big push in order to come out Zakai Badin. Bina Hashem is a big uh, fan of Midah Keneged Midah. And what are we getting into now? We're entering 10 days of Oneg. 10 days of joy. Sukkot. The holiday of happiness. The holiday of <coughs> Simcha and Ruach HaKodesh. And we get into Hoshana Rabbah. Something, ever, uh, something very interesting. Rabbi Nachman Breslev says, The, the Shloshar Yigalim have the power to fix a person. To fix a person from the big three ta'avod, these overwhelming desires. I'm saying this, I'm repeating this in the honor of Michael ben Menach that shared this with me last week. He says, what are the big three that, we are, that most people wrestle with? Food, sex, and money. And he says that Rabbi Nachman Ibrahim says that Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot can fix the overwhelming desire that a man can have for food, sex, and money. How? Sukkot mevatel ta'avot ha'ochel. Sukkot has the power to override or to cancel out, to give a person uh, strength over his overwhelming desire for food. Pesach is for money. And Shavuot is for Arayot. So Sukkot is for the food. So I looked a little bit more, searched a little bit deeper about this concept because it was very interesting to me. And I found this. It says, Bishmini Atzeret, which is the last day of the holiday. It, it says, I, I'll, trans, I'll translate it. It says that it takes the darkness and brings it to light. How you, that you can switch. That you can switch the darkness into light by eating and drinking. On that day, should you eat and drink on that day, you can take the, dark, the light out of the darkness from Tikkun HaPgam Mehateava. For anyone that has an overwhelming desire for food. That's the ultimate diet secret right there. Anyone who wants to get saved from the ta'avot of food. There's some people like that. They have an overwhelming desire that they can't turn down a piece of chicken or a bucket of ice cream. Or sometimes there's even like us, regular people that are not dealing or not so overweight. It's not visible that, uh, you know, uh, on on the way a person looks, but there's some people that, uh, you know, once or two days a week, they just binge like crazy at home. It's a tava. You're supposed to eat to get enough sustenance and enough power till it gets you to the next meal, and that's just to give you power to do mitzvot, just to live, to, to perform more mitzvot. When food becomes the ikad, where you're like, you know, it has to be this meal and that flavor, and it has to be uh, not just what I need to, to, to survive for the next few hours, but I need to overeat, to overindulge. It's a problem. Shminyat Seret says, you can tap into that and switch it around. How? By eating on Shminyat Seret. Incredible concept. Very, very interesting. Also says... It says that the achila v'shtiya, the eating and the drinking on Sukkot, is one of the main, main mitzvot. We have 14 meals, right? There's a lunch and a dinner. And it's one of the ikar mitzvot of the Sukkah. Why? It's levarer ta'avah ta'achila b'kdusha. By this now we're taking that ta'avah, that overwhelming desire for food, 
and we're flipping it into Kedusha. Speaking of the last days of the holiday, there's a, speaking of Hoshana Rabbah, you know, we switch in the Amidah from praying for rain or for dew. One we do in Pesach, the other one we do in Sukkot. On the last day of Sukkot, there's a prayer for the rain. And on that Amidah, we switch from Morida Tal to Hashiva Ruach Morida Geshem. So, a couple of years back, I heard a couple of Hidushim and I was able to connect a couple of them together and found this beautiful, beautiful Hidush custom made for Sukkot. In the Amidah, what does it say? Ata gibor leolam Adonai mechayem etim ata rav leoshia. And we switch from Murid Atal to Meshiv Varuch Murid Ageshem. I'll say it again. We switch from Murid Atal to Meshiv Varuch Murid Ageshem. So it sounds like this. Mechayem Metim Ata Rav Leoshia Meshiv Varuch Murid Ageshem. For any of you that study Gemara and know Aramaic, how do you say Rav Leoshia in Aramaic? Hoshana Rabba. Okay, so look at this. What happens when we get to Hoshana Rabba? We go to Meshiv Aruch Murida Geshem. Listen to this. What's Hoshana Rabba? It's day 51. That's it. This is it. The last day of 51 day journey, right? So let's go through the journey. We have Rosh Chodesh Elul, Slichot. Kippur, Aset Yemei Tshuva, I'm sorry, Rosh Hashanah, Aset Yemei Tshuva, Kippur, Sukkot, Simchat Torah, Shmini Atzeret, you come to Rosh Hashanah Rabba, wow, what a, what a journey, what a, what an experience, anyone who got plugged in for those 51 days, really went through some sort of trans- transformation. So when we get to Rosh Hashanah Rabba, we switch to Mashiv Ruach. What happens? The Neshama comes back. Meshiv Aruach. And Morid HaGeshem, we said Morid HaGashmiut. And the, the Gashmiut of a person, the, the person that's, a, uh, that's connected to all, everything that's mundane, it's, it's on a lower level. It's not the same anymore. So if you go to this whole process of 51 days, you get to Meshiv Aruach, you get your Neshama back, your holy, uh, you know, the connected Neshama. And Morid the Gashmiut, and you're less connected to the worldly things. I thought that was beautiful to tie in the, the Amida to the feeling of that journey. Also, you know, you should know that on the 51st day, what's special on it? What Hoshana Rabba? That's the day that the angels get dispatched. On that day, they get the ticket, go. Meaning, Rosh Hashanah, Din. Aseret Yimei Tshuva, Din V'Cheshbon. Let's calculate. It's a, it's a plea bargain. Yom Kippur, Machatima Tova, you got the stamp. So that's it, it's over? He says, no. You still have a chance. You still have a chance. You have Sukkot. Go pick up Mitzvot. You're a baby. You're brand new. Go pick up some more Mitzvot. You, you know, then you have Hoshana, uh, then you have Shmini Atzeret. Hoshana Rabba, up until Hoshana Rabba, you have a chance for things to change. Why? The tickets, the, the, the you know, the, the job uh, uh, description for the angel hasn't been sent out yet. You have up until the 51st day to switch things around. In other words, you have another seven or eight days to still change the outcome of Yom Kippur. But on the 51st day, on Musaf, they get the ticket, go. You know, we are on such a spiritual high at the end of this holiday season. 
Chazal warn us of the instant failure or the fall of Kedusha right after the holiday. It's very common. All the rabbis speak about it. They said, be careful when you go back to normal life. Be careful when you go back to work. You just, you know, you have to think about it. You're, you've been off for about half a month. You've been busy in Teshuvah and Mitzvot. Now you're going back to the grind. Now you're going back to the to the regular hustle and bustle of every day. He said, be careful. Because as high as you went, that's how low you can fall. You have to watch out. The Yitzhara sometimes lets a guy have an incredible Teshuvah season. Why? He's waiting for him around the corner. He says, okay, are you, you think you're, uh, you're so righteous? Anybody can be righteous in shul for 21 days. Anyone can be righteous when he's around the, all these meals and sitting in a sukkah. You're back to regular life. And take this and take that. Boom, boom, the guy falls back. I feel like I've been waiting for you. You have to be careful. You have to land softly to regular life. These are the days that he's very, very strong. Only because the Kedusha is so strong, so is his power. Besides the sukkah, the other thing that is very, very common and that you, you know, is the symbol of this holiday is the arba minim, the four species. Like we said, we have the etrog, the arava, the hadasa, and the lulav. The etrog, found that very interesting today, the citron. The, the Sephardic Jews tend to buy the Yemenite or the Moroccan etrog. Why? Apparently the Yemenite and the Moroccan etrogim are on a higher quality because they're still pure. They were brought from either they're still grown over there or they were brought over some original branches that were never tampered with and they were planted in the side and they're still grown from the original formula of uh, etrog. Apparently now, some etrogim have been genetically modified. They've been tampered with. They put in there a few uh, lemon genes in there or some other citrus fruits in there in order for it to have a better crop or to produce more because the etrog is a very sensitive fruit. The rabbis, uh, I, I was listening uh, to um, Rabbi Gal Cohen yesterday, uh, today and he was saying a typical fruit will give, let's say, 2,000 etrogim. Out of a thousand, maybe a thousand would be good. From that thousand, maybe 200 would be uh, grade A. And typically, they get pasul very quickly. Why? Because if it has a black dot on the top half, it can get, uh, it's not kosher anymore. And even if it gets a little bit of a nick or a scratch, it's not kosher anymore. So it's very hard for the, also, if it's too hot or it's too cold, the drug doesn't survive. So the market is saturated with genetically modified etrogim, or you can get the Yemenite or the Moroccan that have not been modified. So a little bit more mehudar. I even heard of some human citrons that are around. Very rare breed. We have one with us today. The Arava is the willow tree branch, the Adasa we said is the myrtle tree branch, and the Lulav is the ripe green closed date, uh, uh, what's the word that they use? Frond, from the date palm tree. Now we all know the Minim, like I said, there's not too, uh, you can't go into everything uh, in this one hour class. But something you should, that I heard that was very nice about the Arbaminim, they correspond to certain parts of the body. The Etrog is the heart. The Arava are the lips, because it has the shape of the lips. The Hadasa is the eyes, it has the shape of an eye. And the Lulav is like the spine, because it has the shape of a spine. But they correspond to four types of Jews. We know that uh, the Da'arava 
which is the willow tree, en lo tam it has no taste and no smell. The hadas, the myrtle tree, yesh lo reach, ach en lo tam, it has a smell but it doesn't have a taste. The lulav, tam yesh lo, ach reach en lo, it has a taste but it doesn't have a smell because of the, the taste is the date that comes out of it. And the etrog, which is the best of the best, yesh bo tam, vegam reach tov, it has a good taste and a good smell. So they said that each one of these uh, our four species corresponds to a type of Jew. So for example, the Arava, the willow tree, who has no taste and no flavor, those are the Jews that don't have Torah learning and don't have Maasim Tovim, good deeds. Uh, you know, they, they have nothing going on. The Hadas, which has a good smell and doesn't have a good taste, it says those are the Jews that have good deeds, but they don't learn any Torah. We got those guys. They're great guys. They'll do, you know, they're good friends, but they just don't learn Torah. That's the Hadas. Then you have the Lulav. It has a taste, but it has no smell. So that's the opposite. That's the Jew that learns Torah, but has no good deeds. I've seen some of those as well. The Etrog. Those are the Jews that have the Torah learning and have good deeds. That's the best of the best. And you can see that we right now as we're reviewing these four types of Jews, I can right now in my mind I can picture who's a Lulav, who's an Etrog, who's a Hadas. You can see there's many different types. So interestingly enough, you can build on that. If we take the Lulav, the Hadasa and the Arava, they're grouped together. The etrog is what? It's separated. Always has its own box. You have to take it out of the box, put them together, do the blessing, and once it's done, what do we do? We put them back in the box. So they say that the etrog is the, t- t- is the tzaddik, the rabbi, the yeshiva bachor, the stu- you know, the guy that sits in the corner, he's a tzaddik. The, the shlosha meaning that are left over, Let's say that's the common folk. Some learn Torah, some don't. Some have good deeds, some have nothing, right? So how do all these Jews meet? So let's just say the rabbi comes, he's the etog. He comes and he comes and he meets all the three species. He comes, they come together. What does the rabbi do? He tells them Torah, mitzvot, ma'asim tovim, teaches them what he does. Then what he's done, what does he do? He's got to go back to the shul. He's got to go back to the yeshiva. He's got to go back. He's got to be separated from them. Why? The environment changes the individual. Even a rabbi, even a yeshiva bacho, even a, a tzaddik from a corner, if he hangs out with the wrong people, you rub up against them, they have an influence. So the rabbi comes, does an influence on that group of Jews, and then goes back to his proper place. So there's a beautiful chidush on the four species. The, the sukkah itself there's a lot of segulot that we can talk about you know we spoke about you know, they, they say the sukkah is tzila de mnimnuta it's the it's the protection of emuna. that's what the Zohar says it says anybody who sleeps in it or anybody who dwells in it He's going to have protection for the entire year. Don't be that guy. It's hot. It's cold. Mosquitoes. I'm scared. Don't be that guy. The protection of the entire year depends on you being in that sukkah, sitting there, dwelling there. Because what do we say? We said that the sukkah is going to be your uh, your uh, your uh, keva, and the bait is going to be arai. Let that be your dwelling for seven days, and the house is going to be like the arai. So they say, you know, we think the sukkah is just a place where we sit, we eat. Some people just say, ah, oh, you know, halachically, it's just the first meal, just kebetzah, just to eat the bread, and that's it. But why would you pass up on everything I'm about to tell you? Listen to these segulot of being in a sukkah. 
Anyone who does Hidur Mitzvah in the Sukkah, you know, he doesn't spend the cheapest amount of money on a Sukkah. He spends beautiful tarp, beautiful poles, beautiful uh, uh, pictures, uh, excellent schach. He spends money in order for it to be do so it looks good, electric, puts a fan in there, maybe some AC. Sugula le'irchut yamim, long life. saw an image of a beautiful sukkah online. Man, was it impressive. Things were hanging from the ceiling. In the center of the sukkah was a huge, huge, huge fruit arrangement. It looked like a chandelier, the size of maybe half this room. And you look up and there's peppers and, 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 and apples and, and uh, 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 rimonim. And I thought it was kind of quirky, like I never saw that before. And then I read this, and it made all sense. It, it, made, it made a lot more sense. The rabbis tell us that there's certain things that you can hang up in the sukkah that later on throughout the year you can use for segulot. For example, you can hang up in the sukkah oil. And this oil, like for example, imagine you have a string. You tie it to the side, in the middle of the string, you have a, a plastic bottle filled with oil. And that oil, it, it, it takes in all the Kedushah of the Ushpizin. Later on, we'll speak about the Ushpizin. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, uh, Aaron, Moshe, uh, Yosef, David. It takes the Kedushah, and then you take that oil, and you light with it the, the candles of Hanukkah. Big, big segula. They say also hang two bottles of wine. And one of them should be uh, should be drunk in the time of Purim and the other one in Pesach. They say another segula is to hang up wheat or barley. And then to take that wheat and barley and put it in the chamin for Shabbat. I'm picturing now my, I mean, I haven't done this yet, but I'm picturing my, my sukkah. It's like with all these things hanging around. It's so exciting. It's so much fun. You can hang up rimonim, and the rimonim is segula lezara bar kaima. To get, to, to get pregnant, to have children. Hang up rimonim. We said that sleeping in the sukkah, there's a protection for the entire year. You can hang up apples and eating apples, eating those apples after Sukkot has a big, big segula shlema for health. Anyone who wants to get smarter, knowledge, Any of somebody who just builds a sukkah, or just sits in a sukkah, gets to merit the asagat hadaat, because there's a pasuk that says leman yadu dorotechem. Look at that. You can upgrade it uh, intellectually, and your knowledge can uh, move up a couple of your IQ can go up a couple of notches just from sitting in a sukkah. The Baal Shem Tov. Uh, students would say that Chagah Sukkot is the holiday that we are able to get all the Simcha of the entire year because of the Pasuk that says Chag Simchatenu there's a big concept of happiness during this holiday and anyone who sleeps in the Sukkah it draws Bracha and Kedusha for his regular uh, dwelling or regular home for the entire year. So for example, you sit outside and you sleep in your sukkah during Sukkot, and your entire year your house has protection. You don't need no alarms, no insurance, no nothing. Hashem's got you. The Chagav, if it's raining like this, it's considered a Inui. So you don't. Anything that can ruin 
pot. Like for example, if we put a bread on the table right now, and just drips and drabs, it's drizzling, but the, 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 the bread starts to get ruined from it, it's a sign that you're right now, you're not doing a mitzvah. It's not proper to sit down in a, in a, in a sukkah when it's an inuy. Anyone who wants to get pregnant or have an easy labor, the segula to take the etrog and to bite the pitom. You know, <laughs> I share a personal story. When my wife was pregnant with my uh, with my second child, with my daughter, Sukkot came. You know, she was maybe in her fourth or fifth month. And I come from Shul, I'm going to bite the etrog, bite the pitom, it's going to be for an easy labor. <laughs> so, you know, a few months down the road, my wife was uh, reporting that that was the hardest labor of her life. The worst. You never do it again. I can't. <laughs> I got to, uh, and she goes, I don't know if that etrog worked. Are you, kidding? Are you kidding me? And if you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't take a bite, could you imagine? <laughs> Uh, there's a big segula <laughs> for jelly made from uh, from a trog. It's a segula to make the jelly and then to eat it in two bishvat. Also, it's a big segula for people that have heart problems. To eat the etrog right after Sukkot. And even if there's a barren woman a woman who never had a child before, they tell her to eat from that etrog that was blessed on properly during Sukkot. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a, there's a story that was told by uh, about uh, Rav Ovadia Yosef in Chazon Ovadia, who speaks about in Sukkot. He says there was a time where he blessed on a particular etrog. And then they took that particular etrog and they gave it to a few women that one of them, 28 years. Something, some were eight years, I'm sorry, the other one was 12 years. They were For eight years, they were trying to conceive. The other couple was for 12 years, they were trying to conceive. They ate from that etrog, and both of them got pregnant that year. Another famous segula is to pray for Parnasa on this holiday. Because we said that this holiday is called Chag Asif. So we know that Chag Asif is the Shefa Shepanasa. For the entire for the entire year and we know that atzvut sadness ruins a person's parnasa however happiness attracts parnasa so by being happy during this holiday and praying for parnasa so if you have a chance to pray for your livelihood during this holiday Make sure you're happy. There's so many more things we can discuss. I just want to mention one more thing. There's, uh, there's the Ushpizin. The Ushpizin is the special guest, the invisible guest that we have every night in the Sukkah. And they are the seven shepherds of Am Yisrael. Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Aharon, Moshe, Yosef, and David. And every night, we say a certain thing. You can open up the Siddur, a certain thing that you say before you go into the uh, into the Sukkah, and you invite the Ushpizin in. And many people have a special chair that stays empty for the Ushpizin to come and sit on. And the rabbis tell us that each night, the Ushpizin visits every single Sukkah on the planet. So imagine, on the first night of Sukkot, Abraham is sitting right there. So they say a person should tap into the Ushpizin 
and to their character, and to their midot, and try to internalize what they have. Like for example, if Abraham is chesed, Yitzchak is gevura, Yaakov is malchut, Moshe, we know is Isha Elohim, Aaron, Oev Shalom, Yosef, Yesod, David, Mashiach. Let's say for example, you need a little bit more chesed in your life. So on the first night of Mosh Pizin, you talk to this Abraham Avinu, you're my guest tonight. You're honoring me in my sukkah. Please, let me have more chesed in my life. Let me learn how to do more chesed. Let me apply more chesed uh, this year. Let's say you need a little bit more shalom. I need to spread shalom in the world. Tap into the Ashpizin of Aharon. Aharon, you're my guest tonight. Please, let me learn how to do more shalom in my house, between my friends, between uh, strangers. Uh, let me spread uh, peace all over the world. Tap into it. He's your guest. Have the kavanot. They say tap into the midot of the ushpizin. It's a big seata deshmaya. Some people, for the young people that are not married, maybe it's a good time to ask Yosef, who is in charge of the yesod. Yosef, I need more protection of the yesod this year. I'm trying to internalize your energy into my life. Towards the end of the holiday, it seems that we don't have a need for the four species anymore. What do you do with them? Say it's done. Put it in the trash. We so we just heard of the uh, of the segulot of the etrog. However, the other four species have unbelievable powers. Unbelievable. It says that there's a segula that a person should take the willow branches, the aravot, and bang them on the floor. There's a whole, there's a whole seder at the end, chavatat aravot. The little leaves that fall off during that time, take them and put them in your wallet or put them in your car. It protects a person when he travels and it guards him when he's on the road. The same willow branches, the same little uh, leaves that fall from that uh, from that ceremony. It's a segula to be saved from fear. Kafa Chaim says, and Rabbi Nachman from uh, from Brestov says also in Sefer Amidot, anybody who has fear in his life, sometimes also children, right? They have nightmares, they know, or they're scared. It's good segula to put that under their pillow. Or if somebody has fear for whatever reason, put it in his wallet, put it somewhere, put it in your car, put it in your attaché case. A little leaf. Look at the power that it has. Anyone who suffers from fears and bad dreams at night, put it under a pillow. Placing the lulav and the other species in the entrance of one's home is a segula for protection. I've seen this. Maybe this year I'll practice it myself. Right at the entrance, right, right over the door, you put the, dula, the, the lulav. Better than any ADT, better than any protection plan, better than anything. The lulav. If they ask, you have insurance? I have the lulav. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> Rabbi Vadia Yosef wrote in his book, Hazon Ovadia. The Deatrog is very... Uh, As the segula for women that didn't get married and ones that haven't given birth for many years, give them a piece of the etrog. Bless on it. Make it uh, etrog that was used properly for a mitzvah. And then when you're done with the etrog, think about people that might need the seata deshmaya. And say, you know what? Call them up. Tell me, you know what? I blessed on my etrog. You want a piece? You want to eat? You want to get pregnant? You know, before I end this class, I can't end it without speaking about Simchat Torah. Simchat Torah is uh, it's one of my favorite days of the holiday. It's uh, like a siyum party for the entire Torah. We celebrate the finishing of the entire 
חמישה חומשי תורה. With reading, פרשת וזאת הברכה על שמחת תורה. In שיר השירים it says, גן נעול אחותי כלה. The rabbis tell us, חז"ל say, גן נעול. גן, the word גן, is נון uh, is 50, גימל is 3. It says there's 53 פרשיות in the Torah. גן נעול. It's a perfect set. It's locked. However, if you sit down with the Chumash, you'll see, find out that there's 54 parashiyot in the Torah. What was, David, uh, what was Shlomo HaMelech talking about when he said Gan Na'ul? It's not 53, it's 54. What he was referring to is that there's 53 parashiyot that are read on Shabbat. Vezot HaBrecha, it's the only parasha that's never read on Shabbat. It's read during the weekdays on, uh, on uh, Simchat Torah. Also, I don't know if you, uh, anybody gets to merit to do Hagbaha during the time of Zot HaBrecha. Very lopsided. There's like one wrap around on one side and the other side is the entire Torah. So the, the right pole, it's called the Amud HaYemini. When it's all done, when all the Torah has been come over to, it's coming all to the right pole. So when there's a Talmit Chacham, as a matter of fact, Rav Ovadi Yosef, when you used to introduce him, to uh, communities or before he spoke a speech or before he gave a speech over or gave a class over what they call Arav Chacham Ovadia Yosef Amud HaYemini the right pillar, the right pole why? he had the entire Torah he had the entire Torah Amud HaYemini And you know, right after that we start, we have Chatan Bereshit, we begin the Torah again with uh, Sefer Bereshit. But in Simchat Torah, we have another famous song. Sisu v'simchu v'simchat Torah, utnu kavod la Torah. Anyone who, uh, uh, you know, who would like to discover the Hebrew language and its beauty, you can see that there is a special choice of words over here. Sisu is one word that means happiness. Vesimchu is another word that means happiness. You know, I think in the previous classes when we spoke about happiness, we found that there's like almost like 17 different words in the Hebrew language that describe the word happiness. And then like in the English language, we found maybe like five or six. So what's the difference between Sisu Vesimchu? Sisu is happiness that comes when you're finishing something. Simchu is happiness that's derived when you're starting something new. So we say, Sisu ve Simchu. What's the Sisu? We just finished the Chumash. And what's the Simchu? We're starting again, Bereshit. That's the deeper secret of that song. Much can be said about this holiday. I was just trying to touch a few places here and there. But there's one thing that we see it mentioned, but it's mentioned this time period of the year more than any other time. During Sukkot and Kippur. During Kippur and in Birkat Amazon of Sukkot, actually, we hear the concept of Sukkot David Hanofelet. We mentioned this concept of this Sukkot that belongs to David that's falling. The falling sukkah of David. Sukkah David describes what King David put into play into Jewish history. His kingship, his rule, Bet HaMikdash, his son Shlomo, his son Shlomo building Bet HaMikdash, taking over uh, everything that uh, David put into play. Matter of fact, Shlomo Melech, he was the apex of Jewish life. He was the type, the pinnacle. The, 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 there was no better time to be a Jew than the type of Shlomo Melech. From Avraham Avinu to Shlomo Melech, there are 15 generations. The moon 
is at its fullest when on the 15th day Sukkot David Nofelet you can see that from Abraham Avinu to Shlomo Shlomo is that full moon what happens after Shlomo? what after happens after full moon? disappears and starts to become a lot less than before so Sukkot David Nofelet after that beautiful era of Shlomo Melech and Bet HaMikdash it's all downhill since it's been like a, a full deterioration of Avodat Hashem, Yirat Hashem, Limud Torah and right now we are just waiting for the Geulah we're just waiting for Hashem to, picking, to pick up this falling Sukkah to pick up the Jew that's in the Galut and bring Mashiach. Sukkot David Anoferet is us. Shlomo HaMelech, David HaMelech, the Sukkot was fully erect. Ever since every year, a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. You could say, why didn't it say uh, Bet David Hanofelet? Why isn't it a home made out of bricks? Because once that's destroyed, it's destroyed. A Sukkot, once it falls down, what happens? Can pick it back up, can build it up again, and that's what we are. We're waiting to get picked up again. We're waiting to get Hashem to erect Sukkot David again. In conclusion, we are nearing the end of this 51 day journey. Get plugged into Hagasif. Gather all your happiness for the year. Pick up as many segulot as possible. Dance with the Torah. Be careful from the spiritual drop after the holidays. Go back to work and make money. It's that time. But also go back to shul and learn. Stay connected. Continue the journey with Hashem this year. Anyone who got plugged in, again, I'm talking to that 51 club or even to that club 40. Anyone who's been there and has been connected this whole time, don't let go now. Stay connected. Keep going. It's a brand new you. You have no sins. The soul is white. You're wearing a white suit. It's still white. Become a Baal Teshuvah. Do something to change your identity. Be different this year. Be different from who you were last year. It's a secret to success. And how do you know? Did the prayers of the, holiday, of the holiday season got answered? When do you see the results of your prayers? Chazal tell us, just like a pregnant lady begins to show in three months, so do the prayers. And three months from now is exactly what? Hanukkah. In three months from now, in the festival of lights and miracles, you're going to see the results of your prayers. Hazrat Hashem will see you in three months, pregnant and ready to hear your personal miracle. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you for hosting us.